Uh, g'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, we're back with another bi-weekly question and answer video. Now, what this is, if you're new to the channel, basically, if you've got some questions about FPV or about UAV Futures, stick them in the comments down below, and then that way I can answer them and sort of, I really like doing these videos. It's a great way to give back and interact with this community, because I'm just like you guys. I'm just a drone nut, but... This time, this week, it's even more exciting because a massive shout out to Dow Props for sponsoring this episode because they've provided, you know, my favorite question I'm going to pick out this time that I think really helps the hobby the most. They're going to win 50 sets of Cyclone Props. So 200 props. So thanks very much for to Dow Cyclones. Oh, I mean Dow Props. I'll put the link down below anyway. Definitely go and click on that. And I guess that's going to help me out because I think, yeah, we might provide some more prizes or something like that. So massive shout out to Dow Prop, 200 Cyclones. Uh, somebody's going to be winning it today. So let's waste no time. Jump right in and answer some of your question and answers or answer some of your questions. Anyway, alrighty. Uh, so the first one here, and I should apologize straight up off the bat. Really sorry to any names that I butcher. I'm just going to sort of give it a once or twice over and then uh, we'll just move on because I'm not very good at pronouncing names, as you can tell from these comments and uh, also trying to pronounce some of these drones. Anyway, alrighty. -o. So uh, Vasco Lime Lima, hi Stu, how do you choose what to review and do you search for equipment developed by people in the hobby or do you always come up with commercial type parts? Uh, congrats on the channel and uh, and keep being happy doing this. Thanks very much mate. Uh, yeah, I am really happy doing this. I love doing stuff for UAV Futures and I guess getting stuff on the show. Um, I like to think of it as a little bit like Top Gear. That's how I kind of explain this show to people who have no idea how this works or anything like that. And I say, well, have you seen that show Top Gear about the cars? It's very similar to that. And uh, as far as what I want to get on the show, it's basically something that I think uh, the hobby is really going to enjoy, something that is really cool or maybe just really fun or innovative. So I know a lot of people always give me, you know, they always criticize me and say, Stuart, this is always fantastic or this is always amazing or this is always the best. And if you look back at Top Gear, most of the cars they reviewed were awesome. If, you know, there would, this would be a really boring channel if I got, I get so many emails about junk to get on the show that I'm like, no, thank you. I don't want that. Not at all. People aren't interested. I could do a review channel with just some garbage toys, uh, some other junk that people aren't going to be interested in. But the reason why I do them on all these high performance, high powered FPV racing quadcopters is because that's what I really like. And I think that's what you guys want. You know, that's what I'm passionate about. And I think that's what you guys want to see as well, because uh, that's why there's so much good stuff on the channel because I go out and actively search for all that stuff. And then eventually, uh, you know, I'm able to get some really cool stuff on here to show you guys. Alrighty, moving on. Uh, I've got all the questions on my phone. Uh, we just did that one. So, Visor. <laughs> oh, the names. Um, UAV Futures. Uh, for FPV, do you prefer single screen goggles or LCD per eye setup? And uh, what are the pros and cons of both? So basically, I like to call them the big box goggles versus the two, uh, I guess, versus the fat shark goggles. So. In my opinion, I prefer the Fat Shark styles, and I guess the pros and cons, the pros of the big box style, they're much more immersive, they have a really big picture and some fantastic colors, and they're significantly cheaper, but uh, the cons for them, the transport is so hard to move around, and you know, you might think, oh, it's okay, I put it in my backpack and then take it out to the field, it's not too much of an issue, but the real hassle is, when you crash, you've got to, that's when you've got to take your goggles off, go for a walk, and that part just becomes really, really tedious. So I'd say the pros of the little Fat Shark style goggles, much more portable, and for me, I find I race much better in them. Because I don't have that big, huge, super immersive screen, I'm much more focused on my racing or, you know, on my lines that I want to take, and I think it's just a lot easier. So for me, it enables me to sort of fly at my limits, whereas I find the big box ones just a little bit more distracting. And they feel better for my eyes anyway. Uh, uni, Unix Nerd. What is the most annoying thing in the hobby for you personally? The thing you'd want to change if you had a magic wand? Um, probably like FPV frequencies. I want so many people to come and fly and then it's also hard, like you want to meet up with a bunch of people, but then when there's like 20 pilots there, you know, or maybe like a race day, and I'll talk about races in a little bit as well, it can be really difficult to fly around. So, you know, because you've all got to share those channels and that sort of thing. Uh, g'day! So this one's from John FPV. Uh, g'day! <laughs> Sue, so please explain your proudest moment or achievements in the hobby. Um, this one's going to, you guys, I, I guess my proudest moment in, in this hobby, or I guess... It sounds ridiculous, but when I when I first made my first video on how to do FPV air gates, and I had um, I had like 13 subscribers, 
and I did the video and I put it up and I posted it on Reddit, you know, and some people watched it and I woke up in the morning and I had 21 subscribers. I know it sounds ridiculous now because I've got 70k, but then just going from 13 to to 21 subscribers blew my mind and it was so inspirational that, you know, there was like 10 people who liked what I did and, you know, it really helped them in the hobby and then, um, yeah, it's probably, it's probably that, that moment, that first moment when I, when I made something and I put some effort into it and people are like, Thank, thanks for this and, and just that jump in subscribers from like 13 to 21, I still, I still remember that. It was a, it was a really big proud moment for me. It might sound ridiculous, you know, 21 subscribers, but you know, that was, that was a really big deal for me. This one from Quentin Moonen. Hi Stu, I've been subscribed to your channel for quite some time. Well, thanks very much, mate. But I haven't seen a video on you pr participating in a race. Do you ever do races? And if so, could you make a video of such a race? Uh, yeah, you're right. I've been flying for ages and thanks so much for watching for such a long time. And I, I love racing. Uh, I guess what I'd say, I love track flying because I don't really go to races. Because I would love to. But the problem is, you, you know, from the experience, from I, when I talk to other pilots, it sounds, you know, the competition would be fantastic. I love having races with my mates, like three, two, one, go, and we all race and crash and go pick up our quad and keep going. But for me, I love flying. So a big problem for me, if I go to a race, I might be there all day, fly like three or four packs, and then, and then that's it. Versus if I just go to like the UAV Futures Test Track, I can fly... 10 times the amount of batteries that I do if I go to a race day. So it's all about, I guess, loving flight versus, I love flying more than I love uh, just the, the waiting around just for that one race, because the waiting would absolutely kill me. Uh, hi Stu, this one's from Butch Monkey uh, for the Q&A. Do you think that more expensive quads are always better? Uh, you have the budget builds, but how do they compare to a quad built using only top end components? So. Uh, I guess this one's probably a pretty good example. I've got the Armiton right here now. This is a pretty high-end quadcopter. It's definitely got some really cool kit on here. And I know I've raced a lot of people race. I've flown around with a lot of people who have Armitons and fully kitted out stuff. But on the same hand, uh, I've also got this bad boy right here. So if I can get this off the wall, it seems to be stuck there. Hang on. Okay, well that drone's not coming off the wall, but that was like one of my $99 drone builds. Uh, and I was racing that around the other day, I guess maybe like three weeks ago or something like that. And to be honest, to everyone that I was flying with, that quad was absolutely smashing past them and, uh, you know, almost lapping some people, even though they had, you know, some really top high end quads. So look, you definitely don't need the best performance out there to be competitive. I guess on the upper, upper echelons like DRL league and some really big leagues. Yeah. The big stuff does make a big difference. But for most races, I would say if, if you've got the skills, you can rock it with like a $100 quadcopter and still do considerably well. Some people might tell you otherwise, but I would say, you know, in my experience, racing around a cheap 100 buck one, I can still really kill it on the laps versus some people who uh, don't have as many skills but a much more expensive quad. I should probably mention too, uh, in that video, that $200, I was doing a giveaway. So I, I think a shout out, I'll link it up here anyway or a picture somewhere too. I think it's like... Catherine Payne or Major Payne, something, whoever it is, definitely check your inbox because uh, I'm going to be sending out that kit. It was like a, a, some goggles and a wizard and I think like a little charger or something like that. So yeah, definitely check your spam box or something like that because I'll be in touch because uh, yeah, you've won a wizard. That was from a different competition. That's not from the, from the Q&A. Uh, now this one's from, oh, how am I going to say this? Shosen FPV. Uh, hi Stu, I'm not sure if they already spin the opposite way since you're in Australia, but I was curious if you've ever thought about changing your motor direction for racing. I've heard more than a few people recommend doing it as they're less likely to get snagged on gates. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I guess so. Where's, which one can I use? Let's use this one. This is the Leopard that I've got here. Most of mine spin the traditional way. And I know, look, there has been some arguments as to why it should spin the other way, but in my opinion, when I'm flying around, uh, all the grass and stuff that might get cut up, I don't want it getting flung into my flight controller, into my USB, into all my electronics in the middle of my quad. You know, because if it's all going in there, that I don't really want all the wet grass in there. So I'm more than happy for it to hit the front of my camera. I can clean it off. As far as getting snagged on a on a on a gate, yeah, you, it might make a difference, I guess. Like if you're seriously hardcore into racing and that's what you're about. Uh, definitely go out and do it, but I'm probably, because I'm not hardcore into racing or I don't need to place on the podiums or anything like that, I'm more than happy with sticking with my traditional way, I say, or the old school way of how the props go. 
Alrighty. Brian B. Stu, what do you think is the most important piece of technology we need to work on that would improve the hobby? And I'm just going to say congratulations, Brian B., because I really like this question because I'm all about improving this hobby. You know, where do we want to push it in the future? And hopefully some vendors listen to this or we can have a bit of a discussion about this. So definitely you check your inbox as well because I'm going to send you a message, but you've just won a 50 sets of Cyclone props. But the most important piece of uh, technology I think we need to work on, we don't need motors, we don't need ESCs, we don't need frames. I just want some good videos. So, you know, FPV cameras, okay. But the most important part, and I think a few companies are doing this right, you know, like TBS is putting some stuff in with like smart audio and those sorts of things. I want to work on our VTXs. I want some video, whether that be digital video, whether that be analog video, I want more pilots in the air at the same time because like I mentioned before, it really frustrates me when you've got all these people that want to fly, but only like, you know, let's say four or to five people can really do it and the different strengths and the VTXs and sometimes they bleed over and it's an absolute nightmare. And you can imagine how fun it would be if we could have like 30 pilots in the air at the same time. So in my opinion, where all the work needs to go is some sort of video transmission system that's, uh, you know, I don't know how they could do it with the analog bands or anything like that, or maybe digital. But I really want to see a space where we have low latency, good FPV systems that are cheap that will allow for maximum pilots. So whatever the tech is that we work on, you know, and it's probably going to be the the, uh, the VTX, uh, I want to see a way we can have, yeah, low latency, lots of pilots in the air. So, you know, thanks very much for that question, Brian B. Definitely check your inbox for your uh, 50, well, you know, check for an email or something like that so we can ship you out 50 sets of cyclones. Dadam Burke. <laughs> Question. Oh, I should mention too this because this one's got Grumpy Trev. We hit 200, uh, 2,000 subscribers for Grumpy Trev. So when he's back in the country, we will be going over to his place. We'll do a Q&A in his workshop as well because uh, you guys definitely wanted to see that. He was totally blown away and he kept sending me messages saying, Stuart, what are all these subs? This is ridiculous. So I uh, didn't think we were going to get 2,000 over there. So, you know, shout out to Grumpy Trev. We did it. So we're going to be heading over to his place to do a Q&A as well when he's back in the country. Question, in your and Grumpy Trev's opinion, why were quad rotors to drone uh, why were quad rotors the drone to gain massive popularity in the racing scene as opposed to tricopters, hex, octo, blah 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 blah, etc. Great content in your videos. I've learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Thanks very much, man. Uh, I would probably say the reason why we use quads is because if I can get these off the wall, uh, they're more reliable. So tricopter, you've got that part at the back, you know, the, the servo and stuff that can break. And uh, these are really, really rigid and, you know, I guess there's less components to break as well versus like a hex or something like that because you only need four to fly around and that makes it a lot cheaper. Like if you're going to build like a spider hex or something in the original blackouts, every motor was expensive. Every ESC was really expensive. So to put an extra 50% on a build really added up the cost. And it's also another part to break, which is, you know, probably why I think that the quads do so well. And also battery tech, like... Batteries can't supply enough amps for four motors, let alone if you're going to put six on there or something like that. So, yeah, I think that's, you know, I'm pretty sure that's why quads took off. Super quick, you know, quicker than what we can handle anyway. And uh, they've got all those advantages of being cheaper, more reliable, and more robust than some of the other ones out there, some of the other types. Demi Quad FPV. I don't know if I've answered, I don't know if I've seen one of your questions. Anyway, uh, hey mate, have you picked, you've picked up so much speed over the last two years. I'd love to get faster. I've been told to stay low and try to increase my camera angle, but what are your top three techniques to improve? And I would definitely say, Number one, for me, it was uh, jumping onto acro mode. So that's a big step. That's a big step in the right direction. So if you're a new pilot and you want to get better, you need to be on acro mode. Number two, try hitting some FPV gates. So uh, when you're flying around, something that made a huge difference to my flying, you know, it was floating around aimlessly in the sky doing flips and rolls and stuff. But when I started going through trees and, you know, small, especially like some race gates, uh, that's when I noticed a big jump in my skill progression and also something to work towards and you could really notice how much quick you're getting through them. And number three, something to improve would be flying with others because it really pushes you and when you see someone else flying really, really well and you know, or doing something. I know when I flew with Thomas from BMS Web, shout out to, to you Thomas if you watch these Q&As, but uh, he did a fantastic job at, I guess, pushing me and realizing, you know what, that's, that's really good, that's where I want to get to. So. Uh, yeah, so fly with other people. So what were they? They were acro mode, hit gates, and fly with other pilots. There you go. 
Uh, I should mention too, I have like 20 questions to get through, so I don't know how long this one's going to go for. Might be a bit of a long Q&A. Uh, Lucas M, what have you found to be the most common thing that pilots stress over that aren't actually a big de a, as big a deal as people would think? Um, probably like PIDs and rates or like some really microscopic things. Like it's funny when you listen to pilots say, oh, it's because of this or if I had this this pitch of prop or, you know, if I, I need to put my I up or my P up or something, they need to do some small minute detail that's going to make a massive difference in their flying. And at the end of the day, sometimes like, man, just just rock some default. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. And those, those mistakes that you're having or the reason your quad is crashing or you can't get through that gate, it's probably just because you need more practice. That's it. So don't stress over those little things, you know. So don't think, oh, if I had tri-blades or I had, if I had an extra bullnose prop here or a different lens on the front of my camera, all those little parts, those little nuances, honestly, they're not, they're not going to make a difference. Trust me, I fly with like a, I've been flying out lately with that really cheap $100 one and it kicked ass. It was awesome. So yeah, I wouldn't stress too much about PIDs, rates and all those little things. Just rock it on default get some okay, doesn't even have to be expensive equipment, and uh, just get some time under your belt. So don't fuss over that little stuff. Uh, Peter McGill, look, I can pronounce that one. Hi, Stu. Can't help noticing that you seem to be wearing on -way goggles all the time now, even though when you reviewed them, you said you are going to stick with your fat sharks. Has something changed for you to be wearing the on -ways? Yeah, I guess something did change, and that was comfort. Like, I, I tried them on, and then, you know, I made that first review, and then I went back, and I I kept trying them on and they were so much lighter and the fat sharks were starting, you know, I really was starting to feel it on my nose when I was flying all the time. And since switching to the Onways, you know, and I thought the 16 by 9 would bug me, but I really haven't missed it whatsoever. It is funny when I do jump back, I might borrow a friend's, you know, fat shark HDV2s because I don't even take mine out anymore. But uh, I'm just like, well, I, you know, that is a much bigger screen. But for me, I, I haven't missed it nearly as much as I thought. And I think that's a great thing too because we need more competition in the FPV goggle market. J just, just a 101. Uh, Stu, next question. What is your vision for the, what is your vision for the future of UAV futures? And do you plan on leaving Australia to meet other pilots around the world? Absolutely. I would love to meet pilots all around the world. You know, I'd love to like go on road trips. I do want to go and see Bruce, you know, Bruce from RC Motor Reviews. New Zealand is right near Australia. It's like a very short plane right away. So uh, what I do want to do, I'm going to get Grumpy Trev, maybe Calvin and myself will fly over and shout out to uh, Bruce from RC Model Reviews. I'll link his channel down, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows that one. I'd love to go over there and have some fush and chips with Bruce and just sit in his workshop and uh, just talk garbage, talk FPV all day. So I want to do that next year and then definitely do places like head over to the States, head over to Europe, head over to the UK. There's a whole bunch of awesome places that I want to visit, fly around and also interact with you guys because I know I get so many messages of, you know, cool things that you guys are doing overseas and I would love to show up to some meets and just, just talk shop because I love this stuff as much as you guys. Uh, FPV Escape, what is the best and worst day you've had flying? Uh, worst day? Uh, I went out with this guy. I used to fly with this guy called Nick. I don't even know if he flies anymore, but shout out to Nick. And he just upgraded. This is when I was flying around on Clean Flight, and he just updated to Beta Flight. This is you guys who fly on Beta Flight now are so spoiled. Like out of the box, your quad is mint. But back in the day, you know when we we're flying Clean Flight or Open Pilot or Base Flight, you have never seen oscillations like you've seen maybe two years ago or something like that before Beta Flight. Anyway, and I'm flying around on clean flight. My quad's all garbage. Nick puts beta flight on his, and we both had two ZMRs. They, I can't even remember the ESCs they had, but his worked amazing. And he's like, oh, my God, Stu, you've got to try this. I tried his quad, and it felt amazing. So I flash beta flight to my quad, and what does it do? Nothing. The ESCs won't fly. They're built exactly the same. I had one. One of the ESCs was like a different batch or something like that, even though they were the same type of ESC. And no matter what I did all day, my quad was horrible. I spent most of the day on the laptop and then my rates had all changed and the something had changed back then and it was absolutely terrible. I couldn't get the hang of it. It felt awful to fly around with. It felt like jelly. And uh, that's probably the worst day that I've ever had flying because he was having like a total ball. And it just, uh, you know, I guess it was a massive contrast that between his quad flying amazing and mine flying worse than it ever had. I think I broke a couple of things too. I think I went, I only had like two quads then, went home and they were both broken and one burned out of VTX and I was really, really bummed, uh, bummed out. As far as like the, the best day I've had, that, that probably happened this week, to be honest. I went out, it was, uh, it was on Thursday. I went flying around and my old man and my sister came down. I probably see them like once a year, if that, or something like that. 
And my dad's never seen drones, he's never seen FPV or anything like that. And so for me, it was just a really good chance to, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I guess I don't talk to him that much. It was really good to catch up with him and show him what I do and show him some of these drones. And we were out there from like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. when it got dark. And we just fly, like he wasn't flying, he was just watching through the goggles. But we had like some RC cars and did a whole bunch of like this hobby stuff that, you know, it was a it was a blast. So shout out to dad because I think he really enjoyed it. And he the one thing he said was like he'd seen some of the videos, but he didn't realize just how fast they thumped along. He he knew they were fast, but he didn't know they were that fast. And especially because I was showing off the the Talon as well, doing like some little straight line passes. And the Talon review is coming. We're just waiting for Grumpy Trev to get back. So yeah, that was my best day going out flying with my dad and my sister. You know, because they haven't really seen the flying, and now you know after two years, I can finally show them. What, what I've been doing. This one's from James Young. Hey Stu, I think I have a good question. You can probably make an episode about it. How do you increase the longevity of your gear, kit, batteries, motors, flight controllers, ESCs, cameras, transmitters? Uh, my recommendation there, like I guess besides just looking after your stuff and don't drop it as far as your goggles and all that sort of jazz goes, but on your quad when you're flying around, fly over grass. Fly around parks and that sort of stuff. If you go like Bando and you go to car parks or like abandoned buildings and all that jazz, you're just asking to be to have some stuff smashed up because I guarantee, you know, and some people can sort of back me up in the comments, when you go out and you fly buildings and you fly concrete, you go home with broken quads. That's just how it is. You go fly and fly in a field or fly in a park all day, these things will just keep on giving and, you know, will break much, much significantly less than if you're out there flying around concrete. So that's my big tip. Stay over grass. And water. Don't go over water as well. That's that's also a bit of a killer. Uh, hi Sky FPV. Hi Stu. Hope you're all having a good day. What's your number one tip for people in this hobby? I'm gonna get a cup of tea. Hang on. Better. <laughs> uh, my number one tip for people in this hobby would be be respectful to other people who are around because uh, we don't even if they're not into drones, we don't want to like upset them or you know, ruffle their feathers because they're sharing those parks that we want to fly into and we don't want to get, we don't want to ruin it for other people. And the other, I guess, be kind. Like we were all new ones. Don't be, don't be a jerk to other people who ask. Maybe they might be stupid questions, but I'd say just, just be that fellow FPV brother and help people out and be kind and share information and share all the good parts that we love. Don't, don't get really stuck up or snooty or like, you know, that's my, my tip is just stay cool and realize that it's fun and, you know, I guess be inclusive to people. That, that's my tip anyway. And I think that's probably what I try to do on the channel is include everybody and just share this love of FPV, FPV because it's, you know, who wouldn't want to do this stuff? It is so much fun. MF Boom. <laughs> That's that's a pretty easy one with a star in there, I should say. With the fast growth of micro drones, what do you do? You think that the new three inch will become the new standard soon? Nope. I think five inches definitely going to be the standard. There's been some really cool stuff coming with three inches, but that's because it's been winter in the U.S. So every time it's like cold in the U.S., you know, or cold in the northern hemisphere, all the drones seem to shrink, and we get a massive, like I guess, influx of new tech for smaller drones. And then when it comes their summertime. I think there's more work on the larger five inch bigger brothers. So I don't think three inch is going to become the new standard, but I do definitely think that they've, they've come a long way, especially something like the Japalura. Uh, you know, this one is awesome. And for you guys, it, snappy viewers at the home, at home, check, check that out. That's got a, you will, I'm not going to tell you what's in there. You might be able to see it on the picture, but that's going to make a really cool quad done a significant upgrade to this that I can't wait to show you guys. Henry Lambert, good day, good day, mate. <laughs> it's actually good, like just just capital G apostrophe day. That's how that's how we write it. Good day. Uh, what do you feel is a habit that every habit that everyone who is getting into the hobby has? How can people get rid of those habits? Uh, for me, I remember when I started. I I guess one habit that new pilots will have. They might always turn one direction, or they might always roll one direction. So if you are a new pilot, go back and watch some of your FPV footage. Just notch down how many times you feel you turn left or you roll left or you might do one manoeuvre more than the other. And the way to break that is, you know, just, just practice doing the opposite. And you'll probably feel one way will feel more comfortable than the other as well. So, you know, watch back some FPV fo flight footage and if you find yourself turning one way more than the other, see if you can mix it up. 
Go reverse. Do the attract that you're doing in reverse. Kurt B, why is there always at least one dislike on every popular YouTube video? Pro probably just misclicks because I'm pretty sure everyone, you know, likes that like button and uh, they totally agree with everything I say. So look, that one dislike on the video, it's prob there's people just probably meaning to hit the like button. They've just missed it a little bit and hit the dislike button. Uh, OPR, so question and answer. Hey Stu, what is your opinion on multi-GP spec racing idea? Do you think it's going to be good or a bad move for the hobby? Uh, I think this is a really interesting one actually. And look, I'm sure that people are going to get touchy about this and people sit on both sides of the fence. I think part of it's good and part of it's bad. There's some parts I do think should be spec'd. And look, I just want to talk about some of the arguments I like that it should, personally for me, I think most of it should not be. I think it really should be open and, uh, and I'm, you know, diff regardless of how the products were chosen or all that sort of stuff, you know, and people having to pay money to get their products in. But one part I do think should be specced would be something like the VTXs because we all want good video and if you've got a bad VTX and you're in there racing against other pilots, you're actually direct, you might be like coming over their feed or something like that. You don't want to be bleeding into their channel and that can sort of really upset their day. So, Having some spec VTX components like on on the list, like you know TBS or Trumps or something that can we can really know work really well, I think that's fantastic. You know some Unify Pros or something like that. As far as the other parts go, why do we need uh, to to specify what sort of motors we use? Why do we need to specify what sort of props? Shouldn't we just be saying build the fastest quad that you can to get around the track, and we can have a whole bunch of different pilots? trying out the best and that way we're going to find out what the best is and the and the top pilots as well they're not stupid they're not going to be like oh i'm going to put on these super cheap motors or something like that most of the good kit out there anyway most of the pilots who are really racing for the best stuff are going to choose most of the stuff that's in spec right spec racing but let's say some new brand comes up they've got a fantastic motor it's better than what most of the other stuff is out there but because it's not in the spec race no one's going to be buying that motor, and that's just not good for innovation. And I, and I know what some people are going to say. They're saying, well, well, maybe new pilots want a list or something. New pilots can just have a look. Oh, we'll build this. We'll be able to race. Well, yeah, just, just make that on the multi-GP app. Here's some good recommendations, you know. And here's a, here's a little tip, too, for multi-GP. I think uh, what, what, what I really don't want to see is open class being faster than the spec racing because spec racing stuck with this and open class there might be some stuff that's even quicker you know and some times that are even quicker but why would spec racing become the main thing it feels like the push is towards spec racing which i'm which i don't really think is the right move because the faster quads could happen to be an open class you know and we are spec by prop size and by battery voltage as well so you know and maybe a good thing too if we do go down that spec road make it you know the top top three pilots of multi-GP or something like that in the open class, those parts are automatically moved into spec racing over time. So look, it's a bit of a can of open worms. I definitely agree with specking out your, uh, your video and those sorts of things, but I can't really see any good arguments other than new pilots won't know what to choose other than, other than that to sort of leave it open. And just because you don't have a spec motor doesn't mean that your quad shouldn't be able to race some of the other quads in there, especially if it's just as competitive. I feel like it's just really limiting the pool of what we could have as innovation. Anyway, enough rambling about that. That was actually the last question as well. So hopefully you guys like that. A massive shout out to uh, Dow Prop as well for sponsoring that episode. The link's down below to have a look at some of those cyclones. You know what, the battery died like one minute before the end of this FPV episode. But there it is. So FPV Q&A episode. But there it is. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Definitely subscribe for more FPV related content. A massive shout out to Dow Props for sponsoring this episode. I'll leave a link down below as well because they provided the 200 props or the 50 packs of cyclones to give away for the best question. So congratulations. It was Brian B. So congratulations, definitely check your inbox or your YouTube message inbox and those sorts of things because I'll be in touch. But uh, yeah, I'll leave their link down below if you want to check out the Dale Cyclones. And I would say if you want more stuff on the show, go and just click on that link, have a look at their site because then I can say to other vendors or other people we can get some more stuff on. Look, people are really interested in these question and answer videos. We can get some cooler things to give away. And uh, yeah, we should be able to get some really cool stuff on the channel. Now, if you've got a question for next week, definitely drop it down below. Not next week, but you know, in two weeks' time. Drop it down below in the comments because I'll go through every time and uh, we'll pick out the best questions that I think are going to help the hobby the most or I find the most interesting. And uh, you guys will win a prize. But other than that, subscribe for more FPV-related content. And as always, 
Happy flying! Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying!